Captain's Journal, space date 12345. A man's dead today because of me. After an uneventful week on the shattered moon, we returned again to the crater lake. Again, we found the place surrounded by these woman-shaped salt pillars made of strange pink mineral. And again, we found them in a new arrangement. The eeriness was palpable. So I cracked a joke. One of us should just go up and smash these things, I said. Take the rubble back as samples. A few laughs. A buck private wrote him. He volunteered. He always wanted to impress me. So I ordered up a chisel, a hammer, evidence bag, and sent him out. I shouted down the science officer who said, Captain, Captain, we can't interfere with alien minerals. We don't know what they'll do. Yodhamd went out and he called back to me. He said, Captain, it looks like rock candy. Those were his final words. He raised the chisel, looked up to me. And I gave him a thumbs up. He pierced into the thing and gas shot out of it. Some pink steam. He reeled back, started coughing. We all held our breaths. Then started moving towards him. He looked up and the face, the hands, started shriveling. Fur started growing out of them. The science officers said it was some kind of reverse evolution effect. He, he turned into a monkey man, shrank down until he shrank out of his monochrome velours. By the time we were close to him, a Muskrat type thing crawled through the neck hole, and then its furs receded under fish scales, which liquefied into primordial goo, which evaporated into the silent mystery of life. <laughs> One of the other crewmates asked me, Captain, do you think Rothem's still out there? I said, I don't know, son. Now, when I listen to my gut, I feel the answers. God, I hope not. Dr. Skeleton gave a touching eulogy. And I put out a memo, adding rebreathers to the standard planet side loadout, alongside the badges, guns. What are we doing? Playing cowboys out here on the outer rim, in galaxies we've never seen before. Is it worth it? Is it worth our enterprise? Our values of science, truth, boldness, risk? What about our real values? Manifest destiny, colonization, and expansionism. A man died! This is Captain Chirk, signing off from the starboat, Happy Chthonian. Welcome to Happy Chthonian. Uh, in this video, I'm sharing footage of a session I ran uh, with some folks who are total newbies to the game, uh, two uh, new players who never played an adventure game, role-playing game, and we played the wonderful Haunting of Ypsilon 14 by uh, D.G. Chapman. Yeah, uh, great adventure and kind of that grungy 80s sci-fi style for Mothership, although we played it with Adventure Hour, links to the system and the adventure down below. Uh, in, it's a two-parter. In the second part, we'll show the actual gameplay footage, but in this part, it's character creation using my character creator, uh, All Dice Space Truckers. This is a system-neutral sci-fi character generator. I'll put links where you can see me demonstrating uh, how it goes. And then in this video, you'll see another demonstration with uh, players showing how it would look at the table. So again, watch this one for the character creation, see what the characters are and what their secrets are. With this one, I gave everyone kind of a secret to start fomenting <laughs> uh, paranoia. 
very great for uh, first-time players and for sci-fi. And then in the second one, we actually play through the wonderful game. Uh, yeah, I hope you enjoy. Thank you for watching. And this is now the video. <laughs> Welcome to your first game of not Dungeons & Dragons. <laughs> not, not trademarked by Hasbro. Your first game of whatever this is. Yeah. <laughs> The Haunting of Ypsilon 14. Ugh. Okay. So, in this game, your space truckers, which I take to mean like it's a hundred, couple hundred years in the future, okay. and your job, your crew all together on the ship that you don't really own, the corporation owns it, you know, uh, you're not owner-operators, mm. but uh, you take off from Earth 2, and then you drop off a load at the satellite around the planet, and then you take off again from there, and you go into cryo-sleep. Like these chambers that you sleep for weeks and weeks or months because it's so long between planets. And then you go to the next station, and you drop off some stuff, and you pick up some supplies or ore or something. And then you go back, and then you drop off, and you pick up, and you drop off, and you pick up, and you're just trucking through space uh, where no one can hear you scream. And <laughs> you're at the end of like a year and a half long voyage out to the outer rim of the solar system. And then you get to go back. The long sleep, you call it. You get to go back. You get to go back to Earth. You get to be on ground in the greenery for a while before you have to do another one of these mm -hmm. things. Uh, at your last stop, you learned... You, you were planning on this last stop to be at an ice dwarf on the edge of the solar system where there's like a research station. But this happens sometimes. You got a transmission that there's a last minute switch to this remote mining asteroid called Ypsilon 14. So that was the last news you got, and you went back and sleep, and now you're going to there to drop off food supplies, stuff like that, and pick up ore to bring back to Earth for your corporation. Now we will determine who you are. Mm. So there are three people and three kind of types. You could be an android, a mercenary, a pilot or a scientist. Oh. <clears throat> Once somebody picks one, you've got to pick a different one. No, yeah, I can go ahead. The mercenary. Be good. So is that my <laughs> archetype? Roll in the it's middle. It's my roll. Okay. Yeah. Great question. Um, well, let's uh, let's go ahead and be the pilot. I have a pilot. So Ginger's choice will be scientist or android. And then the next step, I'll lead you through this step by step, is pick one of these bags of dice. We're going to start rolling. Uh, Wait, I'm. I think I'm thinking of a missionary. What's a mercenary? Well, you're you're <laughs> you're a paid soldier. Oh God! <laughs> you want to switch to scientist or android? Uh. <laughs> sure we can. Paid soldier. I'll I'll be I'll be not my typical. I'll be not my typical. Right, okay. I'm going so against you said a roll. Um, grab those There's dice out. Much. You could. Interesting. You could roll all of them, or we could do them one by one. Mm -hmm. It might be easier to go one by one. So I'll show you what I'm talking so, about here. This is something I made. Uh, so you put this together. You made this? Yeah. Wow. Holy shiza! Be published online soon. Sweet. Specifically for this little adventure. And on the inside cover, it shows in this like colorful table. Yes. Mercenary starts with an automatic rifle. Okay. So you can put that in this gray box, one of the slots. Automatic okay. Automatic rifle is your first gear. And for the pilot, you have a camera, camera drone. drone robot. You so you put it in, uh, in my inventory here? Yep. And for the sake of our game, you can hold up to 10 things. So that's why okay. you got the 10 slots. Then you'll roll a random gear, which is called a coping mechanism. Now I take a kind of dark view of where the future is likely to go. Mm -hmm. yeah. Some of these coping mechanisms are chemical. So if you're not comfortable with that, you can just pick a different one uh, if you roll one that you don't like. Wait, I roll ones per table on your roll page. Okay. So grab your dodecahedron dice. It looks like this. Each face is a pentagon, and it has 12 sides. All right. Each face is a pentagon. Okay, okay. Got it. 
Oh, you've got the, what is that called? Ice of, you got the 20-sided one. There it is. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> Whatever, Whatever name they call it. And then roll it. Let's see what you get. So you are a character too? Well, you'll be playing the mercenary. You're playing the pilot. I'm playing every other person you encounter. Okay, and okay. And cold, heartless vacuum of space. Yes. So okay, called... six. <clears throat> Stimmy so. pricks. Stimmy pricks would be some kind of a like stimulating steroid. Oh, basically. okay, okay. Is how the mercenary would cope if you went with that. I get a therm. Uh, I mean, uh, I get a thermos of coffee. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> Perfect. The pilot needs that. Yeah, I get it. So do I put with... that in my inventory? Yep. Okay. On the second slot, it'll be that thermos of coffee. Stimmy pricks is the future term for whatever. So this like is. a neurological zap. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And three is how many times you can use it. Uh, yeah. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, it's like your thermos, you can drink out of it three times. And why would you want to do that if you're, you know, if you're in a situation where it would make sense that stims or coffee would help. Okay. You might want to use it. So would, but that would be probably something I would use to hurt someone, right? Well, it's like stimulating. It's a stimulant. It's like an okay. upper thing. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So it, okay, could, it could it could affect the sympathetic nervous system. Yeah. Wakes you up. Okay. Okay. If you're in pain, you could push through with that. Oh yes. Great. Okay. And then the one you grabbed first, isocohedron. Isocohedron with the right. triangular shapes. Oh, and twenty sider. The most popular die in all of this hobby. If I got a nine, I would have gotten pepper spray. Let's see what you get. So this is our gear. Yeah. <sighs> Fifteen. A skull tattoo. Awesome. Army helmet with peace skull sign. Skull tattoo. You can just, uh, these boxes are for things that aren't gear. Everything that isn't gear. Yeah. So you can just put the skull tattoo in one of those. And I keep track of them. Okay. Uh, and you get to decide where your skull tattoo is. Oh, that smoke from yeah. that. <laughs> Peach is gone. <laughs> Brief pause. <laughs> Sorry, bud. Yeah, I like my personality. Jesus. <laughs> A lot of good options, huh? Yeah. All right, here we go. So this is for the archetype? Yep. Six. Okay, I like where this is going. Anarchist rebel. Very nice. <laughs> That's that would be your archetype at the top. A grizzled loner. <laughs> Oh, there we go. Anarchist rebel, and then, and then gear incendiaries. Okay, nice. So it's like flammables. Yeah, like flame grenades, I imagine. Perfect. Yes. Oh, so this goes for gear as well as uh, no. Yeah, the grizzled loner has a harpoon gun. Okay. <laughs> Ta -da! Soon the pizza will be done. Okay. Then... Okay, so next would be the gear. So we need the eight sided. Looks like the pyramid. Yeah. Double sided pyramid, exactly. Oh, you even show us which one it is. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> Where did you even find symbols for that? Those I searched kind of for ones that were. When you say Creative Commons available mm. to people who had just done it before. Yeah. <laughs> Very cool. Okay, let's see what other gear I get. I'm liking where this is going. Didn't like the mercenary in the beginning, but. So, yeah, now you're a rebel mercenary. Yeah. <clears throat> HUD helmet, H U D? Yeah, heads up display. So it's, if you've seen, sometimes in movies, it's like they. Terminator had this, where it like looks and it's a and then yeah things yeah yeah like when it scans things okay okay a rear breather hmm. so a a rebreather a rebreather so yeah a rebreather into, into smoke yes be perfect for our current situation with the pizza yeah <laughs> I like burnt pizza smell yeah burnt pizza is a good pizza. So then okay, person personality. The ten sided die. All right, there you go. Decky. No. Wait. 
Is it this one? Pentagonal. Oh, great. That'll do it. You might have two ten-siders. One that's like... There we go. Oh, here the we go. Okay, okay. The one's place. If you do them together, you can get it up to 100. Good. Fled from battle. All right. So that would go in your white box. Four. And uh, the notes are... Uh... Yep, one of the, one of those. Okay. All right. Let's All right. See. Well, not, not a very good trade for a pilot. <laughs> what was it? Fled from battle. <laughs> I'm out of here, man. I'm domineering. All right. <laughs> domineering, mercenary, tough. Okay. And then, you're all done? Oh, wait, did, we, we didn't use this one. Did we? Right. Did you oh, use? if I didn't put out these as a choice, yeah, okay. then that one would be to pick Mercenary oh. or Pilot, but we won't use it. Yeah, okay. Mm, oh, okay, okay. I like to okay. do as a choice for that first one. This scenario. And then you can put most of your dice away, except for this classic. Cube six that was fun. Is that how most games begin? Kind of. Most. It's a whole. There's a sort of a style or a subset of gaming where it begins with random generation of your character. Some people spend you know hours dreaming up and thinking about and writing a backstory. Okay. Uh, this is a quicker way to do it, I think. Yeah. And more inspiring, right? You don't know what you're gonna get. Exactly. <laughs> Got it. Sit yourself into the role. Mm -hmm. And you get to depict your character. Ooh. All right. Mine is, mm -hmm. mine is old trapper. Old trapper. <laughs> <laughs> What's yours? Kreekna. Kreekna. It's K R Y K apostrophe N A. Good. Creek uh, Nah. Old Trapper. <laughs> Off to a good start. So, uh, you are on your way to this mining asteroid, and you've got a sense of who Old Trapper is, who Creek Nah is, when. I'm, 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 I'm leading us there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. When Ginger comes back, Will um, er, arrives, Will kind of do a go around and just introduce our characters. But before that, there is one other aspect to the personality, isn't there? And that is your secrets. For this, to be dramatic, I will take you aside one by one and have you pick oh. or draw your secret. <laughs> all right. Question, are we all on the same? Great question. You're ship. all on the same ship. Okay. So you're a crew. Okay. You're like the, crew, okay. yeah, and you work for Kala Corporation. You're the mercenary on the ship. Basically, you're the security guard. Yep, okay. You're the pilot. You, although the ship can autopilot between places, it needs someone to dock and take off. You know, in this universe, machines can't do this. In this future, we never got past cassette tapes. And, uh, <laughs> and we're still using cathode ray tubes. It's like an 80s movie version of the future. Yes, right? okay. The grungy ship. <laughs> Bolts you can see everywhere. All right. Perfect. Now for the secrets. Welcome to the Chamber of Secrets. <laughs> and so dark you think. Any one of these. Let's see what it is. Pink signature. Get out. So you know in this place the guy who needs to sign the shipping manifest, his name's Mike. Mike Michelson, you've probably, as a mercenary, been to different, sh you've worked with different ships before. Like, this is, you've maybe gotten to this one before, but you've been around, you've been to this asteroid before, and you want to get in and get out because you, right, you're not in love with being in a spaceship in space for months at a time. And if you get this signature, it means a perfect voyage, and you get a bonus, which means you get to go back to Earth with enough money that you don't have to do this again for like five years. So you want to get in, get out, and not mess around. Okay. Okay. Got it. So this is the Hall of Secrecy. Okay. All right. Jesus. Oh. Hold on. Let's see what it is. All right. All 
we're trying to get a dangerous substance. So you, on the last uh, place you were, another pilot who's a member of this sort of guild approached you. And you're, you know, there's a craft to piloting, isn't there? There's more to being a pilot than just being a, a you know, they pay you and you do your job. Sure, you have to have experience and skill, and so, yeah. Some kind of honor, right? Like the old ship captains. Yeah. So, you know that the real reason they rerouted your ship to this asteroid was to get some kind of a substance that they found there, like an unknown alien substance. And you, you've heard through the grapevine there are sort of agents in your guild who know that your cor Kala Corporation wants it to weaponize it. Okay. And you cannot allow biochemical warfare to proliferate. All right. Yeah. Your ship, so. Okay. You know. All right. So I will eradicate the dangerous substance. Very good. And do my best. I'm going to mission. <laughs> so you get down Android, and then you get out your 12 cube. <laughs> D12 is the D&D D12. D12. Okay, yes. okay. D12. <laughs> Ooh, those are sweet. Marbly. Mm -hmm. I was thinking about bringing mine too. No, he's got everything. He said don't forget <laughs> oh, yeah, your dice too. Of course, yeah. Yeah, that's awesome. Well, there's How many sets do you have, Chris? I definitely have a full. Moonshine, yes. <laughs> <laughs> As an android, I'm sure you'll need <laughs> Maybe you're like a biochemical android. Yeah, the there others. we go. <laughs> okay. And all these. Down. D20. Yeah. Sweet, One's another one. Nail gun. Sweet. Nail gun. <laughs> oh, why'd you get a nail gun? Yeah, oh, oh, exciting wow. stuff. I love you get nail gun. Your... No, androids are different, so their tables are a little different here, but same dice. Oh, well, I'll, 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 oh, former function. Redacted. We just did this, that's called. It'll be a, is it an eight table? It's like the pyramid. Yeah, it's an eight. Two pyramids back to back. Five, not bad. Dog, I yes. so put that in archetype. <laughs> nice. That feature super sense of smell. Super sense of smell. <laughs> <laughs> and you can put uh, super smell in here. Sweet. Excellent. Ever there's a situation where smelling, you're the go to. <laughs> Perfect. Need a good smeller. <laughs> or wait. You got no, it. no. One of these ones. Uh, either a D10 or a D6. The two flashlights. Same one. Wow, crazy. So, as a pilot, do I have authority over the mercenary? Theoretically, there is some kind of uh, hierarchy. Like, yeah, bureaucratic yeah. hierarchy, yeah. but the company doesn't do much to enforce it. Only, the only people who would uh, kind of swear by that are looked on as kind of you know like narcs and squares. Yeah. Okay. yeah. So yes, but yeah. Okay. Loves machinery. Right. That that's fitting. <laughs> okay. And bam, you got a character. You can uh, come up with a name for your android while you're kind of finishing up. I'll just say the scenario is you're all space truckers. You leave Earth to, you go to a satellite, you drop things off, you go from there to the next place, you go into cryo sleep, except for you. You tend to the ship while everyone else is in cryo sleep and <laughs> maintenance and stuff like that. You're hell. <laughs> yeah, so walking yeah. hell. Yeah. Um, and then they get up, and then the, the pilot lands the ship because this is the kind of 80s future where everything's still like um, two TVs and cassette tapes. So you need a human to land the ship and take off. Um, but you're going, you're going, it's been a year and a half journeys out to the outer rim, and the final, your final destination was going to be an ice dwarf research station, but classic uh, corporation. They switched at the last minute, and it's a remote. Mining asteroid, Epsilon 14. Pick up or drop off supplies. Cool. Now, everyone else got their kind of uh, characters made already and picked a secret. It's your turn to pick a secret. And for okay. this, I'll take you to a different room. Now, 
for the androids' secret. They picked the other two out of the four. Are these both interesting? Yeah. yeah. Your secret. Which one? Let's see what it is. You can't leave any human being on your crew or in the mining station to die. That makes sense. It's like in your ethics programming. Great. Perfect. Right. Simple. I love it. Okay. Thank you. Yes. You have your orders? Yes. Let's go. Absolutely. Let's go truck some truck space. <laughs>